So this week's video is designed to give you some background and information on the Glyndawa Rebellion, um, which saw one of the Welsh leaders have a number of uprisings against Henry IV's regime. Uh, and this video will aim to show you what happened, why it was taking place, uh, and ultimately the end result for both parties. So we'll investigate the context behind the revolt, why did it take place in the first place, um, did anything spark it, you know, what happened to kick it off, um, who were the key individuals, so we'll look at uh, Owen Glendower, Henry IV, uh, his son Prince Hal plays a key part in this, in this chapter of Henry IV's life. We're also going to investigate what took place in the rebellion, um, any key battles, any key victories, any key losses for either side. And then we'll move on to see what happened as a result of this rebellion, who were the major winners and who were the major losers. So to add a bit of context behind the revolt, uh, obviously in 1399 Richard II was dethroned, uh, Henry IV took the throne. Um, although Edward Mortimer, the leading Lord of March, did have a better claim, as you know. Um, and in the early years of his reign, Henry had difficulty in consolidating his, consolidating his authority. Uh, and this is where you see this uprising from the Welsh leader, uh, Glyndower. So in terms of the revolt itself, what sparked it? It could be seen that the king was unwilling to mediate fairly in a dispute between Owen Glendore and his neighbour Reginald Grey. Um, this on the 16th of September 1400, uh, where a group of Owen supporters proclaimed him Prince of Wales, uh, and then they began to attack English settlements in northeast Wales. Uh, but then they sort of disappeared into the mountains uh, and went away slightly. So who was Owen Glendore? Um, so he was a Wayne, a Wayne of the Valley, as he was known. He was on his father's side, heir to the dynasty of Powys-Fadoc, uh, which was a Welsh successor state, a petty kingdom and principality, covered a significant portion of North Wales. Um, on his mother's side, he represented what was left of the claims of the descendants of the Lord Rees of Duabath, uh, and they ruled a significant part of South Wales in previous centuries. So a powerful man who could gather considerable support. So the conflict itself lasted a number of years, rather than in the Epiphany plot, which was over really shortly. Um, as mentioned, in 1400, Owain's supporters attacked English settlements in northeast Wales. After melting away into the mountains, nothing really happened until the Tudor family of Anglesey occupied Conway Castle in 1401. And then a few months later, Owain defeated a force on Pumloman, um, and enthusiasm for him became apparent throughout much of Wales. King Henry did lead um, campaigns against him. He didn't leave it to brew and fester, um, but his orthodox strategy uh, made little headway against Owain's guerrilla tactics that he employed. Um, also, Henry's campaign was hindered by a really appalling weather um, that actually made it into popular folklore that many believe Glendower had influence over nature. So later on in 1401, uh, the revolt began to spread. Uh, much of northern and central Wales became part of Owain's. Um, multiple attacks were recorded on English towns, castles and manors throughout the north. So as you can see, there seems to be this strategic moving of Owain's forces. He's taking Wales and now moving into England to become much more of a threat. Now fast forward a couple of years uh, to 1403. This arguably marks the year when the revolt became truly national um, in Wales. A wine had already taken the central and the north parts of Wales, but in 1403 he began to strike out to the west and the south and began to take more and more land for himself, um, thus gaining more power. I think it's fair to say that Glyndower had set aims. He knew exactly what he wanted to achieve. He wanted a free and independent Wales away from English rule, away particularly from Henry IV's rule, um, and he wanted Wales to have its own parliament. I think this is why these revolts went on for so long, um, why he tried to conquer as much land as possible. So then on to 1404, um, here Owain captured the castles of Aberystwyth and Harlech. Um, he then went on to seal agreement with the French and held a parliament at Mackinleth, where he was um, believed to have been crowned Prince of Wales uh, in the presence of envoys from France, Scotland and Castile. Um, and as you know from, from our first lesson, sort of major threats to Henry IV's reign at this point were the French and the Scots, um, and now in turn, the Welsh. Now the early 1400s, so from 1400 to 1405, were definitely the stronger years of the rebellion for Owain. Um, 1405 did represent the climax of his power. Um, this year did have its setbacks. 
Um, the French contribution that he'd requested proved disappointing. Um, he suffered huge defeats, notably at Grosmont Castle, um, and these served to undermine his authority in the southeast, and, and support began to waver. So, what became of Glendower? Um, well, he didn't disappear straight away. Um, he wrote a letter to his French counterparts um, in which he requested numerous things, uh, notably asking that the usurper, Henry IV, be excommunicated uh, and the Welsh should uh, receive full remission for any sins they may have committed in the struggle against him. So very much looking to pardon himself for what could be perceived as acts of treason and arguably were perceived as acts of treason. Now this is where he starts to suffer significant losses. Um, the French didn't respond uh, to his letter um, and then Henry IV's son, um, Prince Hal, obviously later Henry V, uh, proved an extremely effective military leader. Um, Owain's forces lost Aberystwyth Castle in 1408 um, and the following year they lost Harlech Castle. So significant ground they'd made in the early 1400s was beginning to be taken back by Henry's forces led by his son. Now Prince Hal was clever. Um, he decided to not focus on punitive expeditions um, that his father favoured. Um, what he did it was he adopted a strategy of economic blockade. Um, he would use the castles that remained in English control uh, to gradually begin to retake Wales while cutting off trade and the supply of weapons. Uh, by 1407, this strategy was beginning to bear fruit and you see that he takes Aberystwyth Castle and Harlech Castle in the, in the following years. So what became of, of the plot that in the early years had significant power, significant support, was making headway through Wales? Well, the revolt continued to, to splutter on almost. Um, in 1410, Owain readied his supporters for a last raid deep into Shropshire. Um, and many of his loyal commanders were present, so it seemed maybe that he could gain some power back, or, or was this to be a last hurrah? Um, I think as the, as the history books will, will record, it was probably seen as a last desperate suicide raid. Um, whatever was intended, the raid didn't go to plan. Um, many of the leading figures still at large were captured. Um, one of Owain's most faithful commanders, Aris Du, uh, translates to Black Rees, uh, he was captured and taken to London for execution. So what were the ramifications of the plot? How was it dealt with? Um, well, Glendower's revolt proved terrible for the people of Wales. Chroniclers reported that Glendower brought all things to waste. Um, the English king proclaimed havoc in Wales um, and it was accompanied by an extensive destruction um, that Henry carried out on Wales as a result of this uprising that had been, been seen against him. So what became of Owain, Glendower? Well, he almost disappeared, sort of disappeared from the radar. Um, every now and again, odd raids would be carried out that were believed to have been carried out by him, but there was never any official confirmation. Um, when Henry IV died and Henry V uh, came to power, um, he often offered pardons uh, to Glendower's family, which were often rebuked and, and turned down. A royal pardon was finally accepted 1421, offered, again offered by Henry V. Um, now there's no sort of concrete reason given as to why this pardon was eventually, eventually uh, accepted. Um, it's widely believed that maybe uh, Owain Glyndore had died at this point um, and therefore his son was happy to accept a pardon on his behalf. So as you can tell, this second plot that we've looked at, um, whereas the Epiphany plot was over quickly, it was just planned to be an assassination attempt, this one lasted a number of years, um, 1400 to 1405, the key years where attacks were happening, the Welsh were gathering support, um, but it lasted all the way up until sort of 1416, where the raid was still being carried out. So it was a significant part of Henry IV's reign, and one that was ultimately dealt with effectively.